J. Cole really thought that he was going to be doing something, trying to be all wholesome, and all this would subdue any sort of hostility between himself, Drake, and Kendrick. But K. Dot was having none of it, just yelling from the background. Hey, I don't fuck with y'all. Did y'all know that Prince outlived Mike Jack? I'm Prince in this conversation. Get it? I'm Prince, brother. I'm paranoid. But anyways, Future and Metro Boomin just dropped We Don't Trust You, and Kendrick's verse on Like That has had really everyone talking because he very clearly had some some words and things to say to Drake and J. Cole. Let's do a quick breakdown of his verse here, which honestly might not even be that quick, but we'll find out. He starts off by saying, These niggas talking out of their neck, don't put no coughing out of your mouth, I'm way too paranoid for a threat. People just talking shit. Like... The things that are coming out of their mouths are just being said without really proper thought, or at least that's how he feels. Anything that you say can and will be used to kill you, essentially. Like, he he's using whatever you say as ammunition. And, you know, he's just always watching around. Like, he's always paranoid. Like, he's just waiting for somebody to say something. So, uh, just even if it's, like, the most subtle thing. B.O.T., the money power respect. This and a lot of other bars on this verse are going to be in reference to the big three, which is Kendrick, Cole, and Drake. D.O.T. being him, K. Dot, and the, these are the three big things to him, money, power, and respect. And out of these three things, the most important thing to him is the respect. And he just puts it above all. And this also could be a shot at both of them, Cole and Drake, because he feels like maybe they lack one of those things, which, you know, he feels like he has all three. Uh, then he goes on to say, this really could be about anybody getting money, just talking shit, being silly, but it could also very well be just about Drake directly because of his ongoing business deals with Nike and his whole Nocta brand. I hold them sentiments symbolic. Oh, my temperament bipolar, choose violence. Get it up, it's time for him to prove that he's a problem. Here, he kind of acknowledges that he very well could just be misunderstanding things. Everything that's being said could be fully sincere. They're not just things that are being said. Like, he, you know, he could just be misreading the situation. But he's also a little bipolar and decides to choose violence. This also very well could just be a nod to Kanye, who we've known for quite a while now that he is bipolar and has obviously had moments where he kind of goes off. They make, the, they make the Twix bigger. They're trying to make us fat. You know? They're still backing down Trump. <laughs> they motherfucking made the Twix double the size trying to make us fat. And then he also just wants to make, you know, prove that he is a problem. Like, he can rap. He can do all the shit. Niggas clicking up, but turn out be legit. No 40 water. Tell him. This is in direct reference to The Click, which is a group from Vallejo, which includes Be Legit and E40, as well as D-Shot and Sugar T. But... Be Legit and E40 have also clicked up and done projects together, like on their own, from like separate from the click. So he's really just saying that even if people are clicking up, they're still nothing special. Like, yeah, you guys can, like, we're the big three or all this, but you guys are doing this whole tour together. You guys are doing multiple tracks together. Meanwhile, I'm just in the background angry, which honestly could just be a fault of Kendrick's because he's just antisocial as fuck, I guess. He doesn't want to do anything with anybody. But it could just be like he feels some sort of way. He's like, oh, you guys are, you guys got to team up to combat me, essentially. Like, I'm the big bad villain of this whole scenario. And to get to my level, there needs to be two of y'all. He isn't sneak dissing them. He's not trying to sneak diss them. He's being pretty direct. And that's what he's alluding to. He's like, no, we're not doing the sneak dissing stuff anymore. We need to be direct. We need to actually say what we're feeling. You know, I mean, just stop being so subtle i guess but it could also be that you know just talking about anyone else who may feel like they should be in the big three is sneak dissing them rather than being direct i mean there's always been this thing like kind of subtly but everyone talks about it between big sean and kendrick where they're all like oh no we're cool with everyone we're cool with each other there's just misunderstandings all the time but there is something there and maybe big sean feels like he should be in the big in like considered as one of the big three whatever um but moving on to first person shooter he might as well, might have felt that what is being said on that track you know with cole talking about everyone being at that level like everyone's oh yeah we're we're big up and everybody like what cole's saying there is sneak distant rather than him trying to be civil I 
I shout like fuck rap. This Melly Mel if I had to. This is probably just in reference to that time where Melly Mel called out Eminem for being on like the top rappers list and then Eminem got back at them and then just kind of ended it there. I, whatever that was. Uh, but he's basically saying like if he had to, he would diss Melly Mel, which would basically be like dissing rap because Melly Mel was part of Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, who were the pioneers of rap. Got two T's with me. I'm snatching chains and burning tattoos. It's up. Lost too many soldiers not to play it safe. Kendrick just keeps his bodyguard with him due to the paranoia of him losing his life. I mean, you know, growing up where like how Kendrick did, I'm sure he's seen a lot of people who, you know, there was like either even like the most minor of beefs can end horribly for people. So he's just keeping it safe. Like he doesn't know necessarily what everyone is capable of. Like it's the paranoia in his life. If he walk around with that stick, it ain't Andre DK. Think I won't drop the location. I still got PTSD. The stick bit is in reference to Jake Cole's verse on the song Stick. But I still treat a ride through the hood like a hike through the woods. Got a stick that I take with me. Where he mentions keeping a stick on him. The stick in question here is not a flute like Andre 3000 keeps, but rather a gun. You could also look at it like j cole is generally seen as a pretty wholesome dude like he's just a very nice guy and you you know i could see people drawing some parallels to andre 3000 with him you know like the way that they dress the way that they act the way they present themselves sort of but in reality if he keeps that stick on him he's actually the opposite kind of like he's like you try to like kendrick saying like you're trying to portray this sort of wholesome more spiritual version of yourself but you are over here also saying that you keep that stick on you like which is it like how how you how can you do both sort of thing but also the whole first person shooter bit um and then kendrick is not afraid to share his location because he wants all that smoke but he also mentions that he has ptsd which motherfuck the big three nigga it's just big me nigga Boom. What? i'm really like that he then goes on to say again that he's the top three but not two or three and he also says bum which could be a shot at j cole because you know you've seen j cole you see how he dresses himself people can call him that like they shouldn't call him that because that's rude but i understand why people would say that um but you know whatever it's also kind of funny with that line motherfuck the big three is just big me because kendrick's very short he's considerably shorter than both j cole and drake but you know go off short king and then he throws another shot at Drake with the comparisons to Prince and Michael Jackson. Prince and Michael Jackson were obviously huge pop artists in their time and had a long-standing beef of their own. In this situation, Drake is Michael Jackson because of you know the success that they've had, but also because Drake has made all these like constant comparisons. Is even on First Person Shooter where he was talking about how he almost has as many uh, number one songs on Hot 100 as Michael Jackson and then eventually did surpass that. Away from Michael, nigga. Um, and then Kendrick is Prince because him literally living longer than Michael Jackson. So Kendrick's saying that his career is going to last longer than Drake's, but also because Prince is generally considered to be a more artsy person than Michael Jackson was. Like when you compare their two musics, yeah, Michael Jackson was definitely more pop, and Prince was definitely in his own lane doing more RC shit. Nigga, boom. For all your dogs getting buried, that's a K with all these nines. Eagle C Pet Cemetery, nigga. And finally, in in case you for some reason thought this wasn't in reference to Drake at all, like this verse, at, at least at a minimum, he mentions for all the dogs, for all your dogs getting buried. Like the, all these dogs are getting buried. Kendrick's gonna be doing it because that's a K with all these nines, K nine. Kendrick with a nine. Kendrick has a nine millimeter. Kendrick with a nine is going to send everyone to the pet cemetery. All these dogs are going to go to the pet cemetery, which is in reference to pet cemetery. Um, yeah, it's it's a very straightforward thing, but there's so many parts to it, I guess. Um, but basically, he's saying for all you, all your dogs, now nah, they 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 all gone. All your dogs are gone. You're also going to go see your dogs in the pet cemetery. That's where he ends his verse and. Honestly, there was a lot of things said here, and it's kind of funny that Kendrick continually chooses violence when it comes to really any other rapper. I, for one, am always a fan of shots being thrown as long as it stays in rap and it doesn't get too, too serious because 
honestly, it keeps things interesting. It creates a dialogue between rappers, but also gives fans something to talk about and look forward to. Obviously, Drake isn't one to directly respond to something like this because he never does. He'll he'll do like a subtle acknowledgement of it, but he won't straight up say, nah, fuck Kendrick or something like that. Um, but, you know, whatever. I am sure that J. Cole is going to have something to say because he always does respond. Like if it's like a major person dissing him or like mentioning him, like he does get to him eventually, but he's probably going to be all like, man, I'm sorry. You feel that sort of way, sort of vibes. It's like, no, nah, you should, you should understand that this is a community. Like he's going to try to make it hella chill and like kind of tone things down, which is fine. Totally fine. But I don't think that's what Kendrick wants right now. In any case, let me know what your favorite line from this verse was and if I've missed anything as well because I'm sure there's something I missed. I don't know everything. Uh, things go over my head all the time. But that's all I've got. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of all this. And uh, while you're down there, like and subscribe to see more rambling and content like this. Thank you for watching and please stay safe out there. No, I got that nine on me. I'm a canine. I got shooters. Dogs. For all my dogs. Gun bars.